Randolph Rupp is widely considered one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time. After spending time in Lawrence under basketball icons James Naismith and Fogg Allen at the University of Kansas, Rupp went on to begin his own empire in Lexington, Kentucky, where he roamed the sidelines of Memorial Coliseum for 41 seasons. When Adolph Rupp became the head coach of the Wildcats in 1930, there was no NCAA tournament, there was no Southeastern Conference, and there were no African American students at the University of Kentucky. 36 years later, Rupp and UK found themselves in a national championship game that will transform college basketball forever. But as the starting lineups were announced, it was clear that this was no ordinary game. Kentucky, led by the 65-year-old Adolph Rupp, sent out their starting five, all white boys, followed by Texas Western's all-black squad. Perhaps to the kids playing in the game, they were playing for a national championship, but to those watching back home, it was clearly black versus white. Texas Western would go on to defeat the favored Wildcats in a game that would define an era, and what was an inspiring victory for the African-American community would later bring unfair criticism to Coach Rupp. Over the next few years, the all-time leader in wins became the old white coach, and in extreme cases, a racist. Such strong accusations deserve to be examined, so let's go back to where it all started for Coach Rupp. To understand the coach behind the brown suit, you must understand what made the man. Rupp was born and raised in Halstead, Kansas, a town that is currently home to just 2,100 people. Like most Midwest kids at the time, Adolph had a hoop nailed to a barn next to his house where he would spend hours practicing. At eight years old, he witnessed his hometown Halstead Dragons win back-to-back -back state championships and his love for the game of basketball began to grow. In high school, Adolph was simply known as one of the guys, a hard-working six-foot center and natural leader of the basketball team. Uh, at the time I started in the bank here, there were um, a number of, of guys around, men that uh, were his age and went to school with him in high school and uh, played ball with him. Uh, and they were always marveled. They knew him just as Adolph, one of their teammates, and uh, to, that he got to be uh, a person on a, a, a well-known nationally that uh, they would have never believed that would have ever happened, but it did. After graduating from Halstead, Rupp would enroll at Kansas University and was a member of the basketball team. At KU, Rupp learned from two of the most influential figures in the game of basketball, legendary coach Fogg Allen and Dr. James Naismith. The teaching skills Rupp took away from Naismith and Allen were invaluable. He took what he learned from both of those men and then added his own innovations to come up with a Kentucky-style basketball. Before Coach Rupp, the game of basketball was unfamiliar to the modern-day fast break. As head coach of Freeport, a high school in Illinois, Rupp built a team that would go on to win 73% of its games, a team that featured William Mosley, the school's first African-American player. This was also the time that Rupp began one of his most famous superstitions, the brown suit. I started coaching in high school, and uh, I finally got ahead to $22, $23, and I bought a new suit. I bought a blue suit, and that very night, they whipped the daylights out of me. So I said, forget about blue. Back to the brown. And I went back to brown. I wore a brown suit every day since then. The decades to follow would see a coaching prodigy become a legend. Rupp took over a successful but underappreciated program at UK. Administration had always favored football, and that continued through the first few years of Rupp's career. Then he started winning, and winning big. UK received its first invitation to the NCAA tournament in 1942. The next nine years would see Rupp win three national championships, and his position in the coaching world had been solidified. While no African American would suit up for UK until 1970, Rupp had worked and mentored many African American players and coaches. Newton Thomas was a coach that attended many of Rupp's clinics at the traditionally black Kentucky State University. Don Barksdale played for Rupp in the 1948 Olympics and would later become one of the first black players in the NBA. In 1950, Coach Rupp helped Jim Tucker, a local black player, get into school at Duquesne. In 1951, Solly Walker became the first black opponent to play in Lexington. Coach Rupp urged fans to treat Walker with absolute respect. Coach Rupp would also be appointed to coach the Kentucky-Indiana All-Star Game for years, where his team consisted of many African Americans. It wasn't until July of 1964 until the Civil Rights Act was passed by President Johnson. 
It was that same year when Adolph Rupp began to recruit Kentucky's 1964 Mr. Basketball, Wes Unseld. Receiving a commitment from Unseld was a long shot from the get-go. Player safety was the most important aspect to the family, and UK could not provide that guarantee. I've had them tell me, not once, not twice, but many times, that they did not want to be the first to go into Mississippi and play basketball and be right there confined in a small area because at that time at Mississippi State we were having plenty of trouble and we were all white. West decided to stay home and play for the Cardinals of Louisville. UofL had already been integrated and played in the Missouri Valley Conference which also included other teams with black players. The following year in 1965 Kentucky would again pursue the Mr. Basketball from Louisville. This time it was Butch Beard. Beard was a very knowledgeable teenager and knew the significance of integrating the SEC at Kentucky. Lexington was still behind the times and the thought of integrating the SEC rubbed some people the wrong way. Regardless, Rupp felt good about his chances of signing Beard. We thought we had that boy. This Beard boy wanted to come here. I'm positive he wanted to come here. I was out here at the track with him and he told me that he had decided to come to the University of Kentucky. And I said, fine, let's shake hands on that. He did not come to the University of Kentucky, and before the day was over, had signed with the University of Louisville. The years to follow would see many unsuccessful attempts to break the SEC color barrier. Rupp would finally find the man to break that barrier for UK basketball in 1969. Tom Payne, a seven foot one center from Louisville, would pledge to play for the Wildcats. He declared for the NBA's first supplemental draft in 1971, ironically making him the program's first one-and-done player. The following year, 1972, would be Rupp's last as the head coach of the Wildcats, and he would remain close to the program until his death in 1977. What is Coach Rupp's legacy today? Just follow his path from Halstead, Kansas to Lexington, Kentucky, and it becomes evident. Well, the way I see uh, Coach Rupp's legacy is that he was... Uh, a fantastically uh, successful basketball coach and uh, there really uh, are very very few in the athletic world that have accomplished greater feats than did Adolph Rupp at the University of Kentucky. His name is littered throughout the hallways and gymnasium of his alma mater. The 47 year old patch of hardwood is named in his honor as is an annual tournament hosted by the Dragons. His brief stop in Freeport saw the birth of the brown suit and was also the place where Adolph coached his first young black man. I never felt uh, at all uh, that uh, <clears throat> Negro should be barred. In fact, I had a Negro in the first high school team that I ever coached when I was in Freeport, Illinois. Rupp made the jump to Kentucky, a program that continues to be at the top of college basketball 87 years after he first took the reins. Some may look at Rupp's legacy and immediately associate it with the 1966 championship game. For many, the only knowledge that they have of this event is the Disney production Glory Road in 2006, a production that totally misrepresents the legacy that Rupp left on basketball. We feared Coach Rupp, and uh, that was contrast to what he really was when you got to know him. He was a very considerate, warm-hearted, generous person and uh, not at all uh, as gruff and as uh, ruthless as he appeared. The legacy that Rep's journey portrays is one of desire, a desire to prove he could be the best, a desire to make his family proud, a desire to make a difference in the lives of countless young men, white and black alike, and above all, a desire to win.